All right, I want to introduce you guys to a couple gentlemen that are really pivotal individuals that have made a huge impact in my life, okay, in terms of design and drawing. And I hope they can, by me sharing some of this information with you, I hope they can make an impact in some of your lives as well, okay? Some of you guys have never even heard of these people. My other class was astonished. They're like, who? Who are these individuals? They're really important. So does anyone, re and if you do know this, one or two of my advanced students might hesitate for a minute. I want to see if my newbies know this. Do you guys know who this is right here? Does anyone know who that is? Nope. Okay. That's, oops. Let me jump forward. Another notch here. Does anyone know who that is? Nope. No one knows who that is. How about that? That guy. A football player, <laughs> maybe in another world. Okay, how about that guy? One or two might know who that is. Anyone? Someone said Peng Zhu. I said no. Nobody knows. Okay, here, let me walk you through. Okay, that is Sid Mead. How many people saw Blade Runner? Sid Mead designed the majority of Blade Runner. He's a great artist. Very, very talented. I'll show you some of his work in just a second. How many of you get that? Is Leje Matsumoto, who was the inventor of Robotech and Gundam. Okay, who created a whole new, in my opinion, sort of spawning Japanese anime style with Robotech. He created lots of other shows too, but those are probably his two most famous. Robotech was a huge influence on me. It was 1984. I had a beta player in my house. And I was recording Robotech every day on channel 13 at 4.30 p.m. And I would pause it and look at it. And I was blown away at these drawings and these vehicles and all these little details. Absolutely fantastic. Okay. That's the gentleman. That's the brain right there behind that. That right. Who's that guy right there? That's Ralph McQuarrie. Ralph McQuarrie, who saw Star Wars? He's the first key designer that developed almost everything for Star Wars. He set the pace with Lucas from that point on. Okay, and this uh, next guy right here, that's Doug Chang. Doug Chang came forward and worked on the last, uh, you know, the last three Star Wars. He worked on the first one with Jar Jar. Jar Jar, me so... No, not what I do. Okay, but Jar Jar was great. We loved him. Trevor told me he loved him in that movie. All right. But Doug played a pivotal role in introducing. I remember it was 2000. I was working at an animation studio. And I remember my buddy running in with an art of book and flipping it open and looking at these beautiful marker drawings that were done and all these great concepts. Okay. Guess what the common similarity is between three of these men here? This guy, that guy, and that guy. They all went to Art Center College of Design. Okay? They did. Not that you have to go to Art Center College of Design. With a $160,000 salary cap, I would recommend if you do want to go, make sure your work is... And you could talk to, with me about this. Make sure you have an outstanding portfolio. So when you get in there, you apply for scholarship because it's based off of your portfolio as you apply. And if you get 40 or 50 grand, because they want you so bad, you were like that professional, professional baseball player that the Dodgers have to have to make it to the playoffs, then that's who you have to be. Or maybe you're that star kicker that the 49ers need on their team to go to the Super Bowl again. Those are probably the only two sport analogies I could give you because <laughs> outside of that, my mind is empty on sports, right? But what I'm getting at is that there are options for you, but when you look at these individuals, this guy here, this guy, I should have said their names, okay? When you look at Sid Mead here, when you look at, I hope I pronounce his name, I'm just going to call him Mr. Matsumoto because his first name is like Leje, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And we look at Ralph and we look at Doug, okay? When the things I was just talking about up on the board here, worry, stress, doubt, deprive, divest, eliminate, and then the positive reinforcement, the reinforcers achieve confidence and invest. 
these individuals possess a high amount of those three enforcers right there. That's why they're the tops of what they do. Okay? Now, they're just as human as you and I. They might have encompassed some of these other things over their life. That's only, that's natural, totally normal. Okay? Let's take a look at their work really quick. Okay? Give me a second here. All right. And where, what did I do with their work? That's not good. Here it is. Okay. Let's start with Sid Mead here. So I went and got all this stuff. I wanted to prepare it for you guys. I want you to see what Sid was working on. This is back in the 60s and 70s. Before I was born. I was born in 1970. So this is what he was envisioning, what the future would look like. That's pretty cool. He was coming up with ideas that nobody had ever thought of. He was combining aspects of what he had learned at Art Center, vehicle design, transportation design, environment design. They probably didn't have a dedicated entertainment arts program at that time, but they did have, they did focus on properly training people how to draw correctly. I was really lucky to learn perspective from an art center teacher. Okay, that art center teacher that taught me all the perspective taught me the art center method of perspective. We had to make a big book and we did everything the same way they did in art center. It was a huge valuable part of my learning. All right, so let's take a look. Let's flip through some of this. Some of this is from some books here. Okay, does that look familiar at all? That's an interior from Blade Runner. That's a, just a base concept piece. Check that out. I had a student look and say, you know those cool vehicles where like the, there's no middle rim and the tires are on the outside? I said, you mean like a Sid Mead drawing? And they're like, who? Sid Mead was the first one to come up with these concepts and these ideas. I'm going to have to zoom in there. That is from Blade Runner. That's one of the, or you know what? I'm sorry. He also worked on Aliens. That's the alien uh, bay where everyone was in their little t cryo tubes or whatever. Okay. That, I love this piece. It's not the full piece. There's another one. Let me see if I can get the full piece for you here. There's the full piece right there. It's a little de decolorized. But do you see what that is? It's people in the future, it, like a horse race, but the horses are these big mechanical beasts running around a, a circle. And look at the scale of the people. Huh? Yeah, like, like, yeah, I don't know if, you know, yeah, they are, they look more like a greyhound dog than a horse, but I, when I looked at it, I didn't really care about that. I was just looking at it in terms of the scale. What's important to me is look at how small the people are to how big one of those robotic uh, racers are, whether it's greyhound or horse or whatever it is. It sort of looks like a Doberman, but anyway, um, but it is a greyhound, probably. But look at the scale of the people. Just imagine in the future, big giant robots running around a track like that. That's what's important about this piece. It's the imagery. It's the concept behind it. Okay? Does that look familiar? That's the alien ship. Gliding through space and aliens. It's a bunch of his other concept stuff. It's great work. This is stuff I just gra grabbed off the internet. I did have a couple. I have a couple of his books that I've bought um, that have been around. Some of them are really hard to find. Some of them are out of print. If you go to Hennessy's and Ingalls in Santa Monica, you can find them. They are available. Yes, Rachel. So back then, is that all like marker and pencil? Uh, the marker, pencil, and then with some type of paint, probably acrylics or or gouache, whatever his preference might be. But yes, no Photoshop at this point right here okay no Photoshop no command Z yes people actually had to do that look at that look at that car that's awesome if I was a cop I would want that car right there great work that's why in my opinion in a lot of people's opinions Sid Mead is sort of like the grandfather of all this he was one of the first artists that was going out creating this type of illustration work Look at that. You know, I'm just thinking of that movie, Pacific Rim, that just came out. And I see that big robot, and I'm like, 30? You know, what, what was that? 1965? How many years ago? 45 years ago. 
right? Sid was already working on that stuff. Look at that. Look at the, the height of an individual next to that robot. Great stuff here. I wonder if you thought, hey, I just created LED lights right there. No one knew what LED lights were like back then. That's a shot of L.A. in the future, because that's a very famous Los Angeles monument, right? We've seen Dragnet, tons of other movies, okay, with all with futuristic buildings around it. Great illustration, all right? So that's Sid, okay? Let's jump off of that. Let, let me come back over here really quick, okay? I also had, oh, we just saw some of these, but I tried to put a separate folder of Blade Runner work. So here's more of the work he did just for Blade Runner, okay? There's a you know street concept piece right there that was from Blade Runner. Uh, that, I thought that was a really cool vehicle sketch that he has. I mean I think there's a little bit too much thick line weight in the middle, but that's no big deal in my opinion because I mean he was doing this back when nobody else was. Does that look familiar? That's the Blade Runner vehicle that Harrison Ford drove around in. Okay, I don't know where that was from exactly. I was trying to figure that out. I thought that was sort of cool, like people wear these suits, maybe because of oxygen or whatever. And then the back of the suit, there's a wheel that comes down. And then you can like stand on the wheel and it drives you around. Yeah, see it? You just stand on it, they're like, later. You know, drive home. That's a, um, somebody else did that. That's not, that's a 3D render, but I just thought I should, because that looks just like one of the clips from Blade Runner, from the movie. But I just thought I'd show you how his vehicle and everything was designed. That was from somebody else, but some of you have never seen Blade Runner. That's why I wanted to show you that. Okay. Huh? Yeah, it's great. Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, before he was Indy, is in it. Okay. Was it? No, I thought he did that before. Well, maybe I'm off. But this was one of the scenes in there, one of the environments where he goes to buy the eye from the guy. Does anyone remember that? Anyway, great stuff. Fantastic work. Okay, so that's, hold on a minute, let me back up here. So that is wonderful Sid Mead. Okay, next let's take a look at the granddaddy of Star Wars. I wish I had more of his work, but I don't. That was one of the original concepts for C-3PO. Look at R2 behind him. This is Ralph McQuarrie. Okay. Look at Chewbacca. Really? That was a long time ago. We're talking 70s. Star Wars came out in 74. 77. 77. So, yeah, so I, he was probably working on the stuff around 73 or 74, doing concept a couple years before the film. It will shock you. <laughs> right? Pretty cool. You can see it signed down there, Ralph McQuarrie. I actually have a tin I bought of a bunch of his work that's still wrapped, hasn't even been opened. It's like a bunch of his pieces like this, about, I think there's 10 or 15 of them. I still have it at home. I should open it and find out what's, you know what, I should put it up along the wall. Huh, that'd be cool. Look at that. That almost looks like a scene from the movie, doesn't it? I'm almost positive I've seen that exact scene, especially that vehicle to the T. Yeah. Where uh, George Bush, I mean Darth Vader, is walking down right there, uh, going across, right? You remember that scene? That's a trop. Yep, that's right. He didn't quite look like that. They made his head a lot larger, which I really thought was a cool design. That was an early sketch. It was a little, yeah, you know. Darth Vader doesn't quite look like Darth Vader, but that's okay. All right, that's Ralph. And it was hard to find a lot of work on Leger since he is in, uh, Mr. Matsumoto's in Japan. But I just poured, pulled up these core images here that he was responsible for. I loved Robotech. I still, when I look at it, I mean, I know this is a little out of resolution here, but when I look at the fine details, uh, 
this taught me a lot about just tracing these over and copying these when I was younger. It taught me a lot about understanding. See how they're wrapping the shape with little lines and interior lines to cross, I call them cross contours. They're putting little details that are help indicating what the form is. See a line wrapping over this little section here. These little segmented lines coming through here. I get I talk about that in the in the video a little bit. There's another great shot right there. There's always been this fascination with with uh, aircraft carriers, and that comes back from the '60s with Jack Kirby, when he made the helicarrier for Avengers in the comic book. Okay, there's always been a fascination for these huge, large ships that might have the ability to fly. Okay, great stuff there. All right, and I wish I could find more of his work. I couldn't. Next, let's go take a look at Doug here. Doug has quite a bit of good work. I mean, he's a, you know, he fit. Oops. Let's see if I can go forward from here. Doug has a couple books that you can buy that I think are great. You can find them for a great deal. They're around 20 to 30 bucks on Amazon. He has one called Mechanica right here. He shows a lot of his process. He has another one called uh, Ro Robota. It's a Mechanica cover. All right. Here's some of his sketches. These are great. This is where we're going to be taking our project towards that you guys are working on right now. I'm going to do a demo for you where we're going to start using some of the Copic markers in here to render up part of our vehicle. But that's later. Right now, what we're working on is nailing down the perspective. And in the demo I did for you that I'm going to play today is I went into a student's work, I cleaned up the perspective, and I started adding detail. And then we took a look at the difference of where we were. And that student was really close in his design. He's just slightly off with a couple perspective problems. But enough, if you're off just a little bit, remember, it's by small measures that you can be off. It's enough for anyone to look at and go, eh, something doesn't look right. And if you can do that and get the eh factor out of a drawing, then there's an issue. Okay, but I have some great samples here. I have posted a bunch of these on the blog for you to look at. So when you look at the line quality, you'll start noticing, especially this, I thought this was a great little render here. You'll notice, sorry it's out of res, that's all I could get. You'll notice the thick line on the outside and the thin lines on the interior. This is really important. A lot of you guys have been drawing and have been using, you've been pressing on the Wacom pen like it's a felt tip Sharpie marker. Okay, some of you have to learn some sensitivity and be able to drag that. You can literally hold the pen and drag it across and it's just touching the surface of the Cintiq will create a nice soft line on there. All right, that is doable in digital, with digital media. You could, there's some brushes in Photoshop you could use to create that right there. Okay, but what I want you to start thinking about when you start looking at a lot of these sketches, you will notice thicker exterior lines and thinner interior line detail. Okay. All right. Does that look familiar? From Star Wars? Was it number, was it four or one? one? Yeah, I get confused on the whole order. How they're going in and out of stuff. Okay. Um, here I had a couple more pieces that he did. I thought that was a really cool piece. Okay, yes, he's using markers on this. We have markers in Sketchbook Pro, but guess what? We can erase them if we see fit. They can erase when they're doing this. And I'll show you some really cool techniques between the marker and the airbrush tool on how we can get some really fantastic looking elements inside Sketchbook Pro. All right, I, and while we're on this, I just wanted, you to sh I wanted to show you some of Doug's color work. Which I find, um, I you know, I think he's a, a really talented illustrator, and um, I wish I saw more of his work out there. And you know, some people I know someone, a couple of students the other day, someone said to me, his work's stiff. I'm like, it, it's not stiff. He's showing you a production still from a movie. He's not a storyboard artist who's getting in there and showing you action of people rough and fighting with swords. He's showing you a production still. Keep that in mind. That's important to remember. Oops, I didn't mean to jump ahead that far. Let's go. Did I skip one? Yeah. There's another piece that he did. It's a separate piece. Look at that one. Look familiar? Who's that? Walking in there. A young boy. 
That's supposed to be Anakin, that's right. Oh, I don't know what happened there. What happened if I zoom in? Oh, that's weird. Okay. Is another one of this? Just a little concept sketch, like a giant freighter. See that, how it's carrying all the boxes? Looks like it's maybe walking across the desert. That's from Star Wars as well. That's when they all go in to meet Anakin, or uh, Jar Jar's clan, right? Does that look familiar? I still think that's a great iconic piece. I mean, he came up with that before it went. That's a production. I mean, that still, what you see right there was in the movie. I've seen that exact shot. Good job, Doug. Fantastic stuff. Okay. Look at that. That's cool. Great stuff. Okay, that's Doug. All right. The next gentleman that I want to show you is going to be Scott Robertson. Okay. I'm going to show you some of his drawings. I think, in my opinion, this is the one thing I love about Scott's stuff, is he is a perspective master. He is a great designer of vehicles. I think he does excellent work. These are his sketches, which are, you can see, they're just spot on. Everything about them is great. But do you see how the, well the perspective is working inside these? Scott created a great book. It was called Drive. I was something I would really like to do here at the school because I mentioned this the other day in front of the dean. I I might be able to get funding from Vatia, and we I could create. We could have when the 108 class comes here in fall, students can take it. That's the advanced class to this one, and I would give you guys assignments that would go into that book, with your name on it, which means, I I needed we would create like 250 pages. But you would be published. I would print the book. I could ask for a Vitia fund, $6,000, to print 1,000 copies. And then you would have a book that would go in your portfolio that would show your work. You would be published with your hard work and dedication. Does that sound cool? Okay. That's something I want to do. That's easily plausible. I've been thinking about that for a while. That's something that Scott does quite often when he was at Art Center. He was head of Art Center's Entertainment Division. Okay. Look at the thumbnails here, all the little sketches. Oh, does that look familiar, guys? That actually, I don't know if that was from Scott or not. Um, I think he was going over someone's work. But that's just really simple, basic. That's sketchbook thumbnails. That's exactly what we're doing right now, is we're figuring out all these little points right there. Okay? We're drawing through our shapes. Can you feel, can you see the solidity on how this individual is drawing through the shapes and see, can you feel how things are wrapping around and you could grab it and touch it like you could pick it up that's what we're working on right now guys I don't expect you to to get to this level in this class right now that's fine I do expect you to be able to pull that off though I'm not expecting you to crank out vehicles left and right and boats and all kinds of cool designs that stuff can come later give it time Look at that. Look at how beautiful that page is. Isn't that awesome? It's the whole page of variations of silhouettes. But not just silhouettes. He's gone in there now. He's added detail. And he's turning the objects from different point of views. Okay, that's Scott. Uh, Scott also has a bunch of great books um, that I would highly recommend. I was just starting to mention one, a couple to you. So a couple recommendations that I would give to you. One of my favorite books, so that the idea that I was telling you about, Scott had did this at Art Center, where they would get books printed, and the students would design the product, projects that are inside there. They have one of my favorite books of all time, which is Alien Race. He has this other book called Drive, where he took, I'll show you some samples from Drive here. Let me go through some of this. That's from Drive, okay, where he took, that's actually a photo back there. My 3D students in the 120 class, I might start working on this with you guys next semester as projects, is we might start modeling. Look at that. Does that look familiar, Regina, when we're doing the Cobra vehicles and the G.I. Joe stuff? Right, Aaron? That's just a render right there that was pulled into Photoshop, and they lightly painted over and put some highlights 
and some you know metal surfacing on it. That's it. I could show you how to do that. That's easy. You guys have already done the hard work of modeling it and going through the concept, right? Wouldn't that be awesome to have a book from a junior college that rivals the level of art center grad, but at a junior college level? Wouldn't that be awesome for those of you that would like to go to Art Center and you had that in your portfolio and they opened it up and you had a little post-it on there and they flipped there and they saw Regina's work in there. Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe it's not Art Center. Maybe it's Disney. Maybe you go right out and work. That's fine. Maybe you're Jason Slavin and you're just going to go right into games. That's fine. There's no problems with that. But check that out. Can you see how that was modeled? Can you see the detail in there? That was modeled in 3D. And it was, you know, they take it, they go back over it, they drop it into a photo, they go over it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay. The rest of his ship designs, there's another one of Scott's books. Scott is the owner of Design Studio Press, which is, uh, you know, a book company that publishes. I believe the majority of stuff that they publish are um, individuals that have gone to Art Center and moved forward. Okay. But it's a great, it's a fantastic uh, approach here. How many people would be interested in that of my students? Designing work with specific guidelines that would go into something like this. There's the cover for Drive, by the way. I highly recommend. I have a couple of these books. I can show them to you. If you're looking to get books for your library that you will not be dissatisfied with, a majority of the Design Studio Press books are absolutely fantastic. We've actually had Scott here as a guest speaker before. I'd like to have him back. I'd like to contact him again. Okay. This is some of the armament. I saw a demo with Scott once where he was taking geometric patterns. Doesn't this look totally different than anything you've seen? He was taking geometric patterns and he was moving patterns around on top of armor suits to come up with new ideas. The one thing I really like about Scott a lot is when I see him draw and work, he's really big at coming up with um, sort of, I'm going to call them accidental ideas, but they're actually, they're not really accidents. He's doing it on purpose. He's trying to find things he would have never have thought of before. So to do that, he'll take a thumbnail and marker, and he'll make it like an environment, and then he'll zoom. He'll scan it and zoom into it, and he'll rotate it, and then rotate it at multiple angles, and then he'll start to see what looks like a couple starships coming out of that comp that he never thought he would have got before. He'll take a rough sketch of an individual like this, and he'll take geometric patterns and start slapping them on top of that rough sketch, until he sees something that sort of magically comes out of it. Another thing I've seen him do, uh, a couple of the students in the, uh, on Mac, MacBooks, there's the camera option. And to create creature faces, if you go to the MacBook camera and you tell it to do a symmetry, and you hand, hold up like your fist like this to it, and you make these weird looking faces and you take a picture, you make what looks like this alien face with your hands or with like a ball of lettuce and stuff. And then you take that and you go over and you paint on top of it. So trying to think outside of the box, another way to come up with ulteriors to your design process, which is absolutely fantastic. Okay. All right. So that's Scott Robertson. Look at that. That's from Drive 2. Yeah, Camaro. Wouldn't you like to jump in one of those? Listen to some Motley Crue and the police chasing you around town. Nope. Someone's like, who's Motley Crue? That's all right. Okay. But check out Scott's stuff. He has a lot of great books. That's from Drive 2. Look at how cool that is. I'm actually going to go out to the desert this weekend to go ride buggies with my buddy. And when I look at that, it just gets me excited. I'm like, oh, I wish I could take that thing and go romp it off a, a five-foot sand dune and just launch it into the air. Look at how cool that design is. It's excellent. He's a, these are all top-quality artists. They have books that are out there. They have sketchbooks available. You should admire them. You should get their stuff. Even at the minimum, the majority of everything you're looking at here is available, that I've showed you, is available online for free. If you have their books, you will get more of them. I would highly recommend. Okay? What I would recommend to you, though, as a professional, don't. some people are grabbing people's PDFs. Don't grab PDFs of these guys. Okay, there might be an older PDF out there that might be from, you know, a couple old illustrators back from the 50s or 60s. But don't, don't, you know, these guys are grandfathers of their trade. 
they're excellent in what they do. Don't just honor them by, you know, grabbing illegal copies of their books. For $20, that's nothing. Put your, turn your cell phone off for a month, okay? Tell your friends not to call you, but just to write uh, a letter and drop it off in your mailbox. In the $160 fee you pay for your smartphone, you can go buy eight of these books, okay? And if you can't afford them, you can come by my office anytime. I have a huge collection of them, and I can let you check one out or make copies of them. Deal? Great books to look, for, look at. Great books to draw from. There's nothing wrong with copying the art that you are seeing here. Look at the design sensibilities that every one of these awesome artists are presenting towards you and their design process, and then use that to build off of and then create your own design philosophies. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? Look at that. Look at those tires. That just looks like, you know, it almost looks like a helmet. It's just like a mean helmet on steroids. <laughs> you know, just plowing through the dirt, coming to run over people. Okay? That guy sort of freaks me out. It sort of looks like my mother-in-law. But, you know, but she has blonde hair, so if you put blonde hair on her, then it would have looked just like my mother-in-law. Okay? Anyway, that's Scott Robertson, guys. Amazing artist. Let's see if we can get him back here at school. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this part.